Welcome back. It's that time of year again. Everybody can see the snow on the ground. Hear that the birds, well, they're all flying south. Um, but also, yeah, it's time for the Advent of Code Challenge. Something that I live streamed in 2019. Uh, in 2020, didn't put quite so much effort into that. And we're back. So, um, without further ado, let's try problem number one. Oh, by the way, I did spend some time this morning setting up a project on GitHub, Advent of Code 2021, along with the Advent of Code data plugin, which I intend to install right now. So, this allows automatic fetching of data for this challenge. You can install this with pip and um, you have to use your correct token and I've set this up in advance but I've not actually done this install step so we're gonna see go through this together um, so I'll have to keep that in the clipboard but uh, let's try problem one sonar sweep you're minding your own business on a ship at sea when the overboard alarm goes off you rush to see if you can help. Apparently, one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent the sleigh keys flying into the ocean. Before you know it, you're inside a submarine. The elves keep ready for situations like this. It's covered in Christmas lights because of course it is, and it even has an experimental antenna that should be able to track the keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna's signal strength by displaying 0 to 50 stars. Your instincts will tell you that in order to save Christmas, you have to get all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. As the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean, it automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby seafloor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report your puzzle input appears. Each line is a measurement of the seafloor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. For example, suppose you have the following report. I guess this indicates scanning outward from the submarine. It found depths of 199, 200, 208, 210, and so on. The first order of business is to figure out how quickly the depth increases just so you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will get carried into deeper water uh, by an ocean current or a fish or something. Count the number of times a measurement increases from one to the next. Uh, there's no measurement before the previous one. In this case, for the sample input, there are seven increases. Uh, how many measurements are larger than the previous measurement? There you go. So that's puzzle number one, along with the general theme of the advent of code. Um, I'm now going to switch over to Tmux, or rather to my uh, terminal. So, my thought here was also that uh, I should be able, using W3M, to look at the problem description up here. Um, we've logged into 2021, should be able to get the same description up here. And I wasn't fully confident in that, so I showed that from the browser. But yeah, here's the English problem description. And with Tmux, I'm able to split my terminal and uh, attempt to solve it. Although I'm starting to think maybe this... Yeah, this particular way of splitting the terminal was not super bright. Um, so let's split it this way instead, eh? So... Um, first, we want to install the thing I mentioned in my buffer, uh, or my clipboard. So we're going to get the advent of code data fetcher successfully installed. Uh, second, I'm briefly going to look at usage for said fetcher. Um, 
Oh. Okay. So, AOCD input that text. Okay, just kidding. Um. All right, so we want this Evan of code uh, to input that text, which will get today's input. There's our input. Cool. Um, add a block keyword so to AOCD to get data. Um, Oh, also, yeah, apparently I could embed uh, the fetching directly into my code. Um, for example, uh, from AOCD import numbers. And let's see, add a block keyword to AOCD to get data. If your input's not available, whatever. Um, so rather than uh, encumbering myself, we're going to. I don't even remember how in Python to read a file. Uh, or line in read one dot text. You tell me if this is valid Python. Um, read is not defined. All right, is it open? Hell, I don't remember anything about Python. Okay, I take that back. I remember everything now. Maybe. Um, so, let's see. Oh, actually, wait a second. Let's try this a little bit differently. For number in numbers, print number. Let's see, does this actually do something? Word unexpected. Oh, sorry. Apparently, uh, hey, we got numbers. Uh, one dot pi or number in, or I'm sorry, or depth in numbers. Depth. Does this do anything reasonable? Cool. So, oh, right. I would like to actually be able to. <laughs> well, this is going to be something. Um, I'd like to be able to submit my result from this terminal directly. I'm not set up to do that. I'm going to have to submit my answer through the web browser instead of through this one because I don't know that I could actually get my session imported into this terminal that I have through W3M. That's perhaps a bit too much, so I'll have to submit the answer through the website, but um, 
I could at least show you the process I'm using for coding this here. Um, now it's equals zero. Uh, last depth equals zero. So if let's see, depth is greater than last depth. Um, count equals count plus one. Regardless, last depth is um, equal to what's it? Uh, depth. And I want to set this to some sufficiently large number. Uh, print uh, count. So say what you will about well-structured code, but there's my answer, um, which I am now going to not so proudly go back to my browser here and just submit directly. Continue to part two. All right, considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you expected, there's too much noise in the data. Instead, consider sums of a three measurement sliding window. So um, over this sliding window, compare the first and second three measurement windows. Um, the measurements in the first window are marked A, 199, 200, 208. So uh, the sum of measurements in the second window is larger than the sum in the, ah, okay. So over a sliding window, com uh, compare the number of times that the measurement increases. So there are five sums that are pre larger than the previous sum. All right, all right. Well, that's less convenient. Um, yeah. There's reasons I don't like these challenges sometimes. It's a good problem. Um, so, yeah, I can't... I'd have to log in on left pane somehow in this terminal to be able to show the full problem description. But... Um, oops, control should be left. So, if I wanted to show the entire problem rather than how many measurements are larger than the previous measurement. Um, we also want to keep track of how many times the sliding window has increased. So we've done this iteration. Um, actually, let's keep all that. This is as hideous as could possibly be, but okay. Um, all right, this is, don't do this at home because this is like what I'm about to do. Oh, actually there's a cleaner way about this. All right. Um, hmm. So this forces me to use an iterator. Um, yuck, but um, so if I'm going to switch to an iteration strategy, is this how to do it? I forget how we check the size of an array in Python. Like, what's the dimension of an array? 
I guess we need to actually do a little bit of research. Um, Python array length. So x equals len, not length. How could I forget that it's len, not length? I don't know. Um, Python iterator with index. There's a way to do this too. Um, for index, comma val and enumerate. Really? I mean, we could do that. Um, I guess enumerate's the way to go. Unidiomatic control flow. Yeah, this stuff. Yeah, enumerate is cleaner. Okay. Fine. Um, so, we learned something today. Hooray. And that's the whole point of it. So you're not supposed to know everything, but you're supposed to, like, look up things when you need them. So... <laughs> um... Iter depth in enumerate numbers. We'll see whether or not um, I messed up. So the key here. is that if I know the iteration, then I can know whether it's valid to do that first comparison. Um, now you might ask, why do I this count two already in mind? Um, so I need to keep a sliding window, actually. Um, last window is equal to empty array. No, it's not. It's going to be equal to zero, zero, zero. Uh, last window is equal to uh, how do I do this? This probably doesn't work. But we'll try it. Can I, okay, so how do I concatenate this thing with the window? That's another point of confusion. So once more we turn to the interwebs to answer our woes. Um, Python and to list. Probably should use a list rather than array. I don't know if lists and arrays are... Okay, they're the same thing. Kind of. Append is how we append. How could I ever forget? Yeah, there's too much. But, okay. So, it's going to be list append. Um... Like this. Um, if iter is greater than... Is it going to be 0 or 1? I don't remember. 0, 1, 2. So if it's greater than 1... And... 
Let's see. Okay. Last sum is equal to zero. Uh, and sum of last window is greater than last sum. Count two is equal to count two plus one. Um, but also now last sum is going to equal the sum of last window. Yeah, there we go. Does this do anything? None type is non iterable. Sweet. Oh, so. Apparently, Python's not the world's most flexible language. Um, so, after this. 0, 1, 2 is going to fill that. Yeah. No, I mean, we could also concatenate this into one output. There we go. And I'll not so proudly take this number and put it back into my browser. Yeah, aren't these great problems? They force you to learn things about languages if you want to do things efficiently. So yeah, glad to show this off. Um, so we are one gold star, closer to finding the Slakeys. So yeah, how about that? Uh, I'll try to maintain a positive attitude throughout this, at least as far as I get with it. Um, yeah, the person who created this website did it for themselves and a group of friends. Um, so they keep emphasizing that, like, do things if they're fun. And if they're not fun, find something else. <laughs> um... They've explained at length uh, the thought process that they have for producing the puzzles, for producing the architecture of the website, etc. Um, the idea with one idea with this is that like anybody could be able to do these sorts of problems. You could do this with Excel if you wanted to. You could do this with Open Sheets on Google. You could do this like. People make challenges for themselves in like learning new languages, sharing their experiments with their friends, and so forth. You'll find many solutions on GitHub and on Reddit and everywhere else. Um, but yeah, it's a fun way for you to try learning things. And if you get flustered, it's okay. You don't have to solve them all. Although, there is one aspect of this that's perhaps not entirely pleasant, and that's the notion of a competitive leaderboard. And so, like, some folks and organizations, like, everybody was going to make a leaderboard anyway. The fact that that's part of this website, I can understand. But it's the not-so-fun part of this, is that people choose to compete while they're also collaborating. So there is some racing aspect to it. Um, plus, some of the problem... Well, I'm sorry. One more of the notions that goes into this site is that this is developed, I think, by an engineer who works for one of the larger corporations out there. I forget if he's with Amazon or some other group. But um, anyway, like he hosts this site through Amazon because that's an architecture he's familiar with. Um, so he's got enough software development experience to understand that how to structure a problem in two parts, where part one, you form some assumptions, 
And then often in part two, the business, or I guess in this case, him, changed the assumptions. So like you thought you only need to keep track of one recent value. It turns out you have to sum the last three and sum the last three and so forth. Like you can't just, if you came up with some quick, dirty solution to part one, you might have to restructure your uh, code for part two. And he gives you like no way of anticipating whether part two is going to follow easily from part one. And I, I mean, that's kind of how the real world goes. But that's work. That's like the one one thing I don't particularly appreciate is like he likes springing these surprises on folks um, and it's creative. It's since there's a competitive aspect, it makes sense. But I wish that like this were a there were a more friendly division of this stuff. And I guess the friendly division is just do part one, never do part two. But, um, yeah, I wish, like, parts one and two logically followed from each other, and but then we wouldn't have the same adventure here. Um, I'm still trying to petition with JetBrains, trying to figure out, can I get IntelliJ going with what I'm doing here? Uh, I have to share with them some project on which I'm active, and a core contributor and so forth. So I'll see if I can arrange something with them. Ah, uh, yeah, see? Told you you could do it with Excel. Some people, like, tried to do some of these problems with graph paper and calculators and other stuff. It's amazing just how many ways there are to solve these problems. So it demonstrates your, your ability to be resourceful, I suppose. Um, anyway... Hope we enjoyed my frantically trying to put this together. I spent an hour setting up the login and the environment and stuff, and like half my stuff doesn't completely work. Um, I'm still working on trying to figure out how to show the problem description on one part of the screen and the coding on another part of the screen. Um, and there's just some issues here. And I don't know. I need to be able to log in, but if I'm doing this entirely through a terminal, even with the split terminal view here, I would need to somehow get my session ID into W3M. Uh, that's probably doable, but then I also want to be able to submit my code programmatically. There's just a number of things that uh, other coding challenging sites do a little bit better, but this is just this one-off thing, and it doesn't require you to use any particular language or anything like that. So they kept things simple with this site's development. Um, I guess we'll find out over time if I find some better way to do this, hopefully by tomorrow. Yeah, C++ seems overkill. How about using J or Clojure or something? I do want to learn Clojure. Maybe I should attempt to do these problems in Clojure. I don't know. But um, I noticed that I was able to get the problem uh, data fetcher running easily in Python, so that seemed to work decently well. Anyway, I hope we enjoyed that. Okay, I've cut a video here, but, um, all right, I forgot to push my code. Oh, well, I'll have to explain, like, next time. Yeah, I mean, I showed I had the repository, um, for those, I might actually touch up the code a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> so I don't like the fact they have this numbers dependency, but it's kind of okay. Yeah. Um, is there some cleaner way to do some of this? So, 
Is there a way? Oh, no. Oh, there is an automated submit thing. Um, that's kind of cool. I'll just share my entire screen. Why not? So from AOCD, import submit. Submit my answer, part equals A, etc. Now, is there a way... Uh, okay. New version 0.8. Input data is via regular attribute access. I've never done this before. Um, verify against multiple different... Okay. Wow, this is actually pretty cool. Um, right, so if I wanted my script to be a little bit more reliable, import numbers. Wait, no. Goodness. Um, get data. Yeah, let's clean things up a bit. Import get data. Um, uh, do, do, do. There's my alarm clock. I might keep all of what I've done for the video so far, too. This might end up getting published. So, should we try that maybe? Does, do things ever work on the first attempt? Nope. <laughs> String. Now, does get data have a normalization? I don't know. Um, this, man, I kind of, well, hmm. There's better ways to do much of this, but I do like that this caches. Um, also, what is get data for? What is the purpose of get data as opposed to puzzle? I don't know. Wow, there's a lot of a lot of inputs here that are really cool. Um, okay. I mean, we'll try this. Why not, right? Forget get data. Let's try uh, puzzle. Puzzle year 2021. Year of our Lord 2021. Now, how do I enumerate through the input data? I don't think that's going to enumerate. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> Regular attribute access. But the model here, input data, I'm having to cast this, right? Um, Yeah, so depth equal depth to i. That's a hack and a half, but string has no to i. I'm thinking of Ruby. Um, now let me guess that's like C or something. Invalid literal. So I have to do like dot trim unless there's no dot trim here. There is no dot trim. Uh, so I guess let me print 
step. 184, and we're out. Wait. Oh, these are our characters in the input data. So, maybe the enumeration's a terrible idea. Um, we're going to find out just how bad most of my ideas are <laughs> right now. All right, so we we're able to get the entire input data as a list of strings. Um, I'll have to maintain my own iterator. Um, this is ridiculous. Certainly, um, certainly folks know a better way to do this. So, let's try that. Okay, um, if depth is equal to the new line character, break. Okay, one zero. So, obviously that's not right. Um, one eight four one zero. Oh, okay. So input data here is a string of characters. That's not the data structure that's useful to interface with. This is just a raw string of everything, not well normalized. Um, so, oh, wait, I can define a solve for function. We'll deal with more of this in a minute. Unless this might be the easier way about it. Using an entry point into your code. Yeah, that's not helpful. Oh, I see what they're saying. I think. Um... So, <sighs> this really doesn't tell me anything. I could have indented the entire file all at once. So, yeah, I'm coding from a Linux box, a headless server. Um, okay, no entry point bound for hello. Um, I think it's because I need to define things before attempting to access them. Nope, just kidding. Um, hmm. 
you've never written a plugin before. All right, so entry points. Oh goodness. The WIM plugin. All right, well, that might be a bit much for today. I'll have to spend some time offline figuring this out if I can't figure it out very quickly here. Um, what kind of file is this? Setup.py. Oh, so he created his own plugin that has an entry point. Okay, that's a bit much. Um, that's clever. I just don't know what one does with it. Let's see, you're still able to see everything I'm casting here. So, puzzle. How is puzzle not listed as an object here? Oh, strip would be the function I was looking for earlier. Thank you. Um, this is so freaking weird. Yeah, I'm starting to think I should have committed my earlier work. Um... because this is just getting tremendously unwieldy. Okay, here's a puzzle. A puzzle, user input data, title, answer A, answer B. Okay, get answer part A. Okay, answer part B. So I could just like make my own puzzle object or override the answer A and answer B functions or whatever. Um, this is crazy. I mean, it's awesome in a way, but also like, I would think that doing this in any other language could have been easier. Solve for self and plugin. The, the issue I take is that this is bound to a plugin. Like most people are going to find plugin not super easy necessarily to work with. Um, I would rather have just a solve method that or function that by default uses a plugin, but you could just override uh, the solve function instead. Um, Easter eggs, great. Um, but yeah, input data. How do I regularize the input data? I don't know, man. Okay, this data is already stripped at the very end. Um, hmm. I'm going to take everywhere we have two spaces at the beginning of a line and trim the two spaces to the left. We're not going to try this solve for technique today since it's a bit advanced. Um, but we are still able to iterate. Oh, we're, we have the input data. Um, now I want to take this string of text and put it into lines python string to lines split lines oh okay does this work hopefully this works Um, right, so we got to the point of the return statement down there. Int must be a string, not a tuple. Well, damn it. Um, 
Yeah, just kidding. Uh, now I made my own iterator. Um, yeah, I don't need to do that. I can use Python's built-in iterator type. All right, so we have this data, we have this puzzle construct, but it's too much for me to figure out right now. Uh, we don't need to print out every depth as we go along. We could just print out the end result. Yeah, so what have I gained from doing this? My code is now safe to check in because it has the year number and day number of what we're fetching. Whereas previously this was less safe. That's what I was trying to achieve, is this safety of supplying a year number and a day number, as well as the ease of other people reproducing this and whatever. Um, so puzzles equal to that, or, or sample input. Um, and yeah, we could later on define some sort of Python plugin if we were crazy, but this iter comma depth seems useful enough. Um, for readability's sake, let's split the code there, even though, like, whatever. Um, so here we increment count to. I forget if Python supports a construct where it's just plus plus Python 3 x equals 0 x plus plus. Yeah, that's invalid syntax. So, git add 1.py git status solve day one. <laughs> okay, cool. I guess we gotta do this, right? Um, this is stuff you've all seen before. Um, I accidentally hit my caps lock key in my great excitement. Um, but yeah, all of my commits show this. All right, can we actually commit now, please? Solve day one. Good push. Yeah, that's cool. Wait, oh right, I lack access rights to push to my own repository because I created a new user space. To be able to submit to this, I've got to actually get my credentials set up correctly. Get push for realsies, and hopefully this will be fine. Yeah, there we go. Get log without an extra character indicates we've successfully pushed the code changes to the internet. So, what does that mean? It means that now we can see an error in uh, GitHub. So I've attached a linter, and yep, we've got errors already. I'm not fixing it right now, am I? I don't know. Uh, we have a, a linter error here. Um, does this tell me I did bad indentation? Should have preferred four spaces instead of two spaces. We're redefining built-in iter. Oh, that's not good. Um, module name one doesn't conform to snake case naming style. Missing module doc string. Unable to import AOCD models. Constant name count one doesn't uppercase naming style. What's this uppercase naming style? My code has been rated at negative 2.78 out of 10. Woo! <laughs> All right.
Uh, sorry, hopefully I didn't show a private key on stream. That wasn't my intent, and if I did, I'll have to rotate it. Um, but yeah, I don't think I did. But uh, thanks for reminding me. So... Alright. 7.39. Let's try... Um... I don't know how to lint this automatically, but okay, we can re-indent the code at four spaces. Yeah, yeah, I copied my key but did not show it on stream, because I have at least some of my wits about me. Um. Ah. AOCD. Alright, yep. Add requirements.txt. Boom, one.py. Um. So, uh, okay, this apparently counts as a definition. Uh. That's. F oh. Yeah, let's do that n being the number of the numeral of the iteration is a smarter way about it um what else count one doesn't conform to uppercase naming style okay i don't know what to do about that um module name one doesn't conform so it move one dot pi day one dot pi Um, I don't know that I'm going to use this uppercase naming style thing. It seems a bit much. Missing module doc string. All right. So apparently I'm supposed to put some doc string somewhere in here. We're going to learn something about Python. Um, Python doc string. What's a doc string? All right, ah. Uh, all right, so this is complaining because uh, I didn't put a doc string in here. Okay. Sure. Um, solve day one. Uh, if I want to be extra fancy about it, uh, we'll keep this here. So there's day one. There's our doc string. Its status add day one dot pi. I attempt to pass the enter check. Uh, actually. Maybe I should be a little bit less lazy about it. See how the pilot is actually done. Um, so let's install pilot. There's pilot being installed. And... Um... LSR, etc. to Xargs. How do we score this time? Okay, that didn't tell me anything. Um. Oh, okay. Run pilot on that set of files. Uh, local bin pilot. Uh, day one. Six point six seven. So <sighs> upper underscore case naming style. Um, invalid name. 
do all objects in Python is like there's some expectation that they're uppercase. Um, we're gonna learn something about. Yeah, can I just like switch that off or something? I mean, I can, but like, what's the expectation? Um, oh, when I put variables inside of a function, they're no longer observed as constants. So because they're being observed as constants, that's the cause of the confusion. Uh, so yeah, let's put some functions somewhere in my code. Um, def, I don't know, day one. We'll just put uh, put new lines at, or the extra space at the beginning of each of these. I guess this is a more proper way to run this or something. This is dumb, but yeah. There we go. Ah, if double underscored name equals main call main. Yeah, let's do that instead. Uh, if name uh, double main, then invoke. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess that makes some sense. Maybe. Good enough for me. Um. All right. Let's try our pilot again. Trailing white space. Oh, right. Um, missing module doc string. Okay. Missing function or method doc string. So. Okay, the doc string has to go inside the function. Variable name n doesn't conform. To I don't know about this. Uh, um. Okay, we've removed all the dead space from the file. Um, N doesn't conform to snake case naming style. I don't know. Oh, snake case? Wait. Does this have to be like more than one character or something? Um, is that the issue? Step, 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 fine. Yeah, perfect score. Woo! Let's celebrate. Um, now, I wondered, like, just out of interest, um, if I tried to do the same thing on a file and called it 1.py, it complains about the file name. 
Okay. So the file name evidently matters a little bit. Uh, thanks for helping me through this mess. Uh, and push that up to the website. And then get Hubble tell us that we failed for some other reason. Because that's all we ever get in GitHub are failures. Um, <laughs> I joke. It's just so easy for things to fail in so many different ways, so this is why we have to test. Um, Alright, so actions. Pass linter check. Well, we failed again. 15 seconds ago for some other reason. Unable to import AOCD.models. That's not my fault. That's the website's fault. But I guess um, I could make things easier for the website. So AOCD is undefined because I've not added it into my modules or whatever. Um, if I want this to actually work on the website, I have to um, I have to fix the GitHub workflow. So, in in addition to installing Pylint, uh, we need AOCD installed. Wait. Install dependencies. <laughs> well, this is something. Because idiomatically, if, like if I'm going to add. Uh, I've added a requirements.txt file already. So. I don't want to have to. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, pip install pylint, but also install requirements. Um, I'm conflating a couple concepts here. Um, fine. I don't remember pip install. Is this how you do it? Or is it dash f or something? I don't remember. Okay. So get add attempt to fix pipeline. No, that's a bad commit message. We're going to fix that. Uh, install dependencies in pipeline. And uh, actions CI. We don't need to say pipeline. Git push. And letter grip and see if we failed for another reason. Back to actions. Three jobs not completed. Woo! So much fun. Cool. Hooray for progress. All right. Post job cleanup. So, yeah, that took a bit longer than expected, but um, we successfully have solved day one. You can see here's our day one solution. I'm not super impressed with my doc string, 
but it functions. Um, yeah, I don't know what more to say about this. Other than now we got an idea for how we can do day two. And maybe day two will have a better integration somehow between uh, our display and the problem. Which right now here I've got Vivaldi browser. Um, but also like as I was solving the problems, I was using a, a terminal to my headless server that I use for development. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's got a lot of fun things built in here. I set up a new user account. We saw a minute ago I had some problems uploading my solution and so forth. Um, but we've got a more elegant framework. Um, this notion of being able to enumerate through the input data split by lines seems good enough. But if we really wanted to, we could go the whole nine yards and actually define a plugin. And with that plugin, use all the other functionality of this AOCD, such as being able to automatically time out if um, my code goes haywire, which it won't, at least not during day two. Um, yeah, there's probably cleaner ways to do most of this. But, uh, you know, it works, right? Um, I'm also debating, is Python really going to be my language of choice? I don't know. It's really practical to script things in Python if you can remember the language constructs. But it might be more practical for me to learn something like Clojure. Uh, something I could actually apply in my work somehow. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Hope we've enjoyed this little session here. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a good day.